Hello, welcome back to Pleasant View, and welcome to the first episode in season two. This is going to be a pretty story-driven Let's Play series from this point on, and the first episode is going to center around Jennifer Pleasant. If this is the first episode you're watching, don't be afraid to start here if you want to. We have been having one season before this one, but that was more going through the backstory of the characters and getting to know everyone in the hood. So that is something that you can go back and watch if you do want to, or you can just start here. I'll also leave uh, Jennifer's previous episode in the description box if you want to go back and watch only that one. <laughs> but otherwise, let's begin. So Jennifer lives over here in the hood, and that is next to her brother and opposite to the Goths. So it's morning in the Pleasant household, and um, Jennifer is sleeping still. So she's in her bedroom, taking some uh, <laughs> morning uh, off since she um, starts working at uh, 10. So she's having a little bit of a sleep in right now. And uh, she's definitely earned it because <laughs> quite a lot uh, of things have happened in her life recently. Not really exactly connected to Jennifer, but definitely connected to her family. For one thing, there has been some uh, stuff happening with her brother. Uh, <laughs> because, yeah, Daniel and Mary Sue attend, and Jennifer as well, and Angela attended a um, anniversary party by the Tellermans and uh, yeah to make things <laughs> short Bella Goth decided to flirt with Daniel in front of everyone and he accepted it and they ended up um, kissing each other even I think so Mary Sue is very very angry with him right now and uh, as you can see <laughs> Jennifer is also not very impressed with him um she wants uh, to inherit money from him and uh, yeah, she's not really furious with him or anything right now. Uh, she's still like best friends, but um, yeah, I thought this uh, want was too hilarious not to keep seeing as she supports him as well. <laughs> so yeah, Jennifer doesn't approve of, uh, of that, of course. Um, also, she has not been very impressed with Angela recently. Angela is one of her employees at the hospital and she is sort of being groomed into becoming Jennifer's successor eventually. What with being the pleasant, they want to hand down their positions to each other if possible. Um, so Angela has been very antagonistic towards Nina Caliente mainly. Um, she hasn't been acting very pleasantly <laughs> towards her and she has uh, basically attacked her on site. Um, so, seeing as that's also the girlfriend of Don Lothario, who is Jennifer's employee, that's not very good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if uh, Angela hopes to take over the hospital one of those days, that's not going to be on. So, Jennifer is definitely not very happy with her performance lately. And also, of course, we have Lilith, who... In the previous episode, visited Jennifer and was feeling really desperate and um, nauseous. And it turned out eventually that she was actually pregnant. So what with Jennifer working at the hospital, of course, she was very involved with that pregnancy and helped Lilith as best as she could. She also helped Lilith out with some uh, money to pay for all of the new expenses and she also learned that uh, Lilith didn't really have anywhere to live uh, because uh, yeah she had been kicked out by her girlfriend and um, she was uh, squatting with her best friend Ophelia and she still is really and uh, Jennifer is really worried about her and um, I think that she definitely is thinking a lot about both Lilith and Angela right now and what she can do for them and she probably is uh, really frustrated with their parents as well for not stepping up and in addition to all of this of course she's still feeling a bit bad about um, how things are with her daughter Lucy so Jennifer definitely wants to improve 
that relationship with her own daughter as well. Also seeing as she has a granddaughter now, uh, she wants to get closer to little Phoebe as well. <laughs> so there's a lot of things going on with the Pleasants right now. And Jennifer is sort of sits in the middle of all of it. And uh, she definitely wants to improve her relationships or like improve things within the family that is. So those are things that she's uh, thinking about while she has her calm, lonely morning, having some breakfast and preparing for work. Someone is calling her apparently, let's see. Oh, it's Kaylin. Um, <laughs> that's actually her best friend from when she lived in an apartment and they were neighbors. So yeah, they're actually really, really close. But of course, Jennifer doesn't know that um, Kaylin's daughter is actually her brother's daughter. Um, so that's a secret that's been kept very, <laughs> very much secret from everyone in the hood. Um, the work of Mary Sue, of course. Right, so Jennifer didn't have very long to look at the newspaper before she has to leave for work. So she, is, of course, is going to head off to her own community lot, the Pleasant View Hospital. And uh, yeah, we'll play her day at work. And then uh, once she arrives home, I'll send her to work for real. So we have Jennifer arriving out at the parking lot. And we need to also summon in the rest of the hospital workers. So of course, I have my nifty spreadsheet. So the people that we need to summon in are Joe Brunig. Grayson and Edith, they are working uh, the night shift, so they won't be summoned. And we have Don and Kaylin Cox. We have Angela and Marsha. And then also the scientists, Brandy Lillard and Johnson Hamilton. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab those guys. All right, so there they are, all of the employees. And of course, they need to be wearing the correct outfits. So I have a Tom's clothing tester hidden in the wall here. <laughs> so let's start with Brandy. Now she is a scientist at level five. I'm going to look up science and then level five. Joe is um, medicine level six. We have Don, medicine level five. Kaylin also, oh, sorry, level four. <laughs> and Kaylin as well. I think I might have picked the wrong one for him, right? Yeah. Let's make it um, level four. And Johnson was level five. Oh, Miss Angela. Uh, and she is level three. Perfect. And uh, yeah, Jennifer already had her work outfit on. That's fine. All right, so to start out, um, I know that both Angela and Marsha are both nurses. So they start pretty early in the morning. So they would have already been here for quite some hours. Well, for, for a little while anyway. And um, yeah, I bet that Angela would be working here for now. And Marsha can go ahead and sit at the reception desk. And then they can switch around. Um, so work at home and let's go with logic. And that will keep those guys occupied for a while. But the other guys, I want to attend a morning meeting. So let's position all of them in the chairs here. Oh, I think I might have locked this door. I think maybe I need to give Kaylin a key. 
Ja, okay. Um, I don't know if that is enough. Uh, looks like Brandy can't uh, access the room either. Right, and I can't give any more keys. Hmm. I think I think it's better to unlock. Um, because you only have four keys available, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, okay. Maybe I need to like... Maybe he needs to be outside of the room for me to remove it. Um, I think I did that because the visitors are going to go in here otherwise. Um, yeah. Let's just leave it open for now and I can lock it again later. <laughs> okay, so Brandy, you were sitting over here. And Jennifer is on her way. All right, so they're starting out with their morning meeting, discussing what they will be doing today. And of course, they have already some booked <laughs> meetings or booked uh, sessions with patients. And that is from uh, yesterday. So this is what we have. So we have one pregnancy, and that is uh, Ivy Cooper. And uh, she's going to get a checkup by someone today. And uh, yeah, this needs to be the same for all of them as well. And then we have a bunch of flus. <laughs> So we need to um, divide this somehow um, in a good way. Looks like we have Angela down here, actually. Um, so I guess, yeah, we would just go downstairs and hand the vial to her or something of medicine. So I'm going to add Jennifer to her. Then the pregnancy... I think I want to go with Kaylin for that one. Mm. I think Jan can also have Kaylin. And then, yeah, let's go with Kaylin for Dustin as well. And then we can have Joe for these guys. And uh, Jennifer can take care of uh, Bella. Great. And then, uh, yeah, Don doesn't have anything right now, but I think that maybe I can go ahead and uh, like pick up the um, random visitors that are going to end up downstairs <laughs> in the waiting room and uh, yeah, take them as they come, sort of. And... Um, other than that, of course, the scientists will have to create a lot of medicine because, yeah, I think that's going to be needed. I don't know how many vials Jennifer already has. Just three. Uh, so, yeah, so they're, they're going to need a lot more, <laughs> that is. All right, so they're going to continue with their meeting. And I think they're pretty much decided. So let's start with sending Don up to his office, I think. Um, because then I can just um, sort of check who arrives later. But he can start by working. He's almost done with this one. So let's go with sports. And um, yeah, Kaylin and... Ooh, maybe once. <laughs> Kaylin would need to go into her office and I guess um, work at home for her as well. So let's go with mechanical for her. And um, yeah, Joe needs to be in his office as well. So you can work with logic, I think. And um, let's send Jennifer downstairs to give the vial to Angela. And uh, of course, Brandy needs to make some medicine and Johnson can work on the computer for now. Uh, logic sounds good. 
And I think that was everyone. So let's just uh, start time and see if they walk to <laughs> where they need to go. Looks like, yeah, Joe just waited for the path to be clear, I think. Good. Great, now I can uh, remove the key from Johnson and lock this door. Oh, looks like Angela had enough of her training or something. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I guess that Jennifer is going to meet her halfway and she's going to greet her. And of course, she's going to hand her the vial. And yeah, seeing as uh, Angela is working here, I guess it might be like a uh, perk that she gets it for free or something. <laughs> it doesn't make sense that she would earn a wage and then also, well, maybe it does, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to remove the cost for Angela. So she doesn't have to pay for that. Uh, yeah, but she has it in her inventory, so I'll have to have her take that later. Because I don't think I don't think that they work on community lots. That's what what I gathered from the previous episode with the hospital. That uh, it seemed like no matter how many much medicine I had the Sims take, they didn't really improve. So I'm gonna wait until she's actually home. And yeah, Jennifer is uh, going to. Yeah, let's have them go upstairs to her office actually and have a private conversation. And we can start working on the examinations. So the first person on the list would be Ivy for her pregnancy. So let's summon her. Okay, so for some reason she's wearing her uh, default uh, pregnancy outfit, but uh, if I just do this, it will change her to the correct one. So, yeah, she's going to head into this room here. Don is complete, um, has done his, um, um, his article. So... Yeah, I'm thinking just sit here for now. And who do we have down here? So we have... Oh! <laughs> Looks like we're having a teenage flirting session down here. Those guys aren't um, dating. He's actually dating um, Alba Landgrab. So that's a bit interesting, actually. Uh <laughs> but uh, anyway, I suppose, yeah, maybe Iris could have something done. So let's send her upstairs to his office. And I'll have to give her a key actually, because I keep this door locked because they get very <laughs> obsessed with the treadmill otherwise. So I'm going to give second key to yeah, Iris Doe. And it says Doe because it's um, in uh, Lily Doe's household that she's living. So it's actually the first name and then the household name. <laughs> That's why it says it like that. So yeah, let's uh, have her go here. Yeah, and these guys needed to have their uh, session. So I'm going to have Kaylin stop that and greet Ivy. Good. And then Ivy can uh, sit down. And Kaylin will uh, chat a bit with her. And then, let's see. Yeah, looks like Jennifer has uh, sat down. And uh, Angela is also coming in here. Oh, okay, the, this door is also locked. <laughs> Of course, okay, but I actually, I don't think that this room has to be locked. I don't think, unless the visitors, yeah, actually, I think it, um, it's the, because of the visitors. So let's give Angela a key, actually, because, yeah, 
it would make sense that she has one anyway. Um, no, just go in here. And Angela also. <laughs> Apparently Iris thinks that Angela is attractive. <laughs> well, okay, Dom, can you please um, sell the masseuse? <laughs> sell the massage event <laughs> to Iris. Um, yeah, good. And these guys are going to have their conversation. So Jennifer is going to start by lecturing Angela. <sighs> okay. Let's do this. Be masseus. And then I'm going to have her just uh, buy it, I guess. Can I do that? Yes, I can. Right. Um, yeah, so Jennifer is um, yeah, lecturing Angela about her behavior and uh, telling her that she has not been very impressed by what she's done lately and that she actually needs to reach out both to Don and to Nina and apologize. Because seeing as they're pleasant and they are very influential in this neighborhood and they have this high position, they can't make enemies like that. <laughs> and uh, um, seeing as they are so closely working together and everything is so connected in this hood, they need to make allies rather than enemies. And... Um, Angela is trying to argue that uh, Nina has been very forward towards her father, of course. And uh, yeah, Jennifer <laughs> sort of admits that, yes, of course. I mean, Daniel is uh, not uh, very highly regarded in my eyes either right now, but you can't go around and do that. Uh, if you don't like someone, don't show it like that. Um, it's very not befitting of a um, adult pleasant like that. <laughs> so, yeah, looks like uh, Angela is feeling a bit of remorse. But, uh, yeah, she understands where um, Jennifer is coming from and she promises to do her best and try to improve because, of course, Angela wants to impress Jennifer with any means that she has. So, she... Uh, is feeling reprimanded and uh, will try to do better in future. So with that, uh, Jennifer is going to, yeah, I think work uh, on her charisma a bit. And Angela is going to head downstairs again. And uh, it's actually time for her lunch, I think, because she won't be working uh, much more. So have some TV dinner. And these guys are having their exam and the Don is working on um, Iris. I actually also need to add her into the spreadsheet then. So I think the thing I used previously was like sore back, a soreness. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, and we actually got money from the bench. So I guess uh, I won't take any more money. Because we already received 100 simoleons for that. And I think that's, that's enough. So let's do it like that. So they are working on what they need to work on. And uh, you are going to the bathroom. That's fine. Then Johnson can um, make the next um, vials of medicine. And when he puts these uh, vials into his inventory, they are actually going to go into Jennifer's inventory. So that will allow her to use them as well. Good. And then make medicine again. Yeah. She has had her checkup for the pregnancy. So I'm going to make her unselectable. And uh, yeah, I guess that um, she can't say goodbye, but she can um, give her a handshake. <laughs> And yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so next person, um, Amin Miguel, who has the flu. So I guess that he is going to be seeing Joe. 
make him selectable and head in here. Joe is going to stop doing that. And he's going to greet him. Good. And uh, yeah, Ivy is uh, done. So I'm going to clear her off. Good. And the next person that uh, Kaylin had was Dustin. So let's summon him instead. Right, so Dustin is sitting down in this chair. And they're gonna chat a bit as well. Same thing with Amin. Great, so how are you going? You're still massaging, all right. And Angela is uh, having her lunch, so I think that also Marsha can uh, go ahead and have her lunch. That's good. Uh, Brandy actually also <laughs> just uh, made them some medicine and then escaped, so <laughs> I think I'm sending her to lunch as well. Um, but Johnson, I think, is working on the medicine, right? Yeah, yeah, he was actually just done, I think. Yeah. Yeah, as you see, these are a more blue, um, pale blue color, so they're not as potent as the one that um, that um, Brandy did. Can make some more, and uh, yeah, it looks like Marsha was a little bit quick with her lunch, so resume cooking. All right, looks like they have all standed up stood up and uh, yeah they all just need to get their medicine so I am picking that out of Jennifer's um, inventory to give to these guys and Amin is grabbing this one and Dustin that one great so I'm making both of these guys unselectable Let's have them say goodbye as well. I'm actually also going to mark these guys as green so I remember that they are done. Okay, good. So we're moving down the list. That's perfect. So Marsha is, uh, yeah, she's working on her lunch. And Angela can clean that up and then, yeah, use the bathroom and then work at the reception desk. The last um, few hours that she is at work. Uh, looks like she's almost done with this one, so she can continue with that. Okay. Looks like she <laughs> continued with her session up here. So I'm going to make her unselectable. I'm going to remove the key. Right, I need to do that after she's... Um, Cleared off, I think. So, clear off Iris. Good. And now I can remove the key, I think. Yes, good. <laughs> All right, so Don, where are you? He's moving downstairs, good. So he can actually have uh, lunch as well. Great, and Johnson is done with some more medicine, so putting it into the inventory. And he can use the bathroom. Looks like Brandy is done. I think Jennifer can head downstairs as well. Good. Kaylin is on her way to the to the bathroom. And Brandy can go ahead and make more medicine. Yeah, so Dustin and Amin are still here, so I can clear those guys off as well. Because I guess they would leave after their <laughs> exam. Okay, so Marsha just uh, left <laughs> her dirty plate, so let's remove that. These guys keep flirting with each other. Uh, yeah, I guess maybe they will... Um, no. Maybe they will <laughs> get a crush on each other. You will have to see. They seem to be very into each other anyway. 
Right, clean that up please. Jennifer, you can have lunch. Marsha, you can go ahead and use the bathroom. And then I want you to practice on this. And um, yeah, his um, this way to do that. <laughs> Play some games. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Angela is done with her um, article. I'm gonna make her write another one. Does she need anything for her promotions? Okay, she's <laughs> pretty high uh, skill level, so that's nice. Um, it's maybe cleaning. That's good. She was almost done with that as well, so. <laughs> okay, Don is done with his lunch too. Um, he actually doesn't know Ricky. That's interesting because um, those two have very much in common. Ricky is almost like a uh, young version of Don. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they both left someone at the altar and um, have some illegitimate uh, children and <laughs> romance sims and those kinds of things. So yeah, I guess maybe they just sort of greet each other. And they're very attracted to each other as well. Interesting. Yeah, almost the most attractive person Don has ever met, actually. Very interesting. I guess maybe he would ask um, Ricky if he was interested in some massage. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, so let's give Ricky a key then. Yeah, and... Um it's gonna go and be masseuse, and I guess um, I'll have to make Ricky selectable. And yeah, just go up here for now. You know what? It actually doesn't really make sense to even add them on to this if I don't have add a fee that they have to pay. Eh, let's make it 100 just to have something. I think I prefer that rather than not adding it at all. Yes, perfect. Okay, so who hasn't eaten now? I think I think Joe actually hasn't eaten. He actually didn't use the bathroom either. So let's have him do that and then have lunch. Jennifer is eating now. Don has eaten. Kaylin hasn't eaten either. And she actually didn't use the bathroom either. Um, Okay, Marsha is on her way to do that, and Angela is uh, working. Looks like Brandy is done with some medicine. Good, make some more. Uh, okay, Johnson never ended up um, uh, never ended up eating, so have some lunch. Right, Angela, you have one hour left. Uh, I guess you can just leave your station at the reception desk and uh, go practice out here. Right, so I'm sending Jennifer up to her office again and uh, she can continue working. It was creativity, right? Oh, sorry, charisma. Yeah, that's what it was. Good. Yeah, so she also needs to have lunch. Okay, some more medicine is finished. That's perfect. All right. <laughs> yeah, you see what I mean? As soon as they go up here, at once they need to <laughs> use this. Are you not being the masseuse? Yeah. Buy some massage. Perfect. I bet Don will enjoy that. All right, and um, yeah, these guys are having their lunch. Looks like Johnson is done, so he can clean that up. <laughs> Natalia, that's pretty intrusive. <laughs> oh, well. Well, she's really picking up speed on these vials. I think they have plenty now, so she can go ahead and work a little bit on the computer. 
And actually, yeah, Johnson needs to pick up his turn. All right. Okay, yeah, these guys are still eating. So Jennifer was going to see two people, I think. Oh yeah, it was Angela and Bella, right. So let's hold off a little bit on that. Kaylin is done, so she can clean that up. And it's uh, two, so both Angela and um, Marsha are ending their shifts now. Oh, Angela is really, <laughs> really furious with her father. Yeah. She wasn't very happy with what he did. <laughs> to clear off um, Angela. Now let's have Marsha finish the interaction. Okay, so Jennifer is done with her um, with her article. And um, yeah, let's pick up on the logic one. That's all finished. Oh, she's such a workaholic. She doesn't want to leave. <laughs> All right, good. So now I can clear her off as well. Yeah, so Jennifer is keeping on working. Looks like Don is finished with Ricky. And uh, yeah, he got up a bit uh, higher on the relationship panel. So please stop doing that, Ricky. I know that you definitely want to <laughs> work out right now, but... So let's um, mm -mm, clear off Ricky and uh, remove his key. Good. Don wants to watch TV, but I think that he should actually work a bit more. So let's um, work on an article. And she's in there. He can put the vial into his inventory. Joe, please go up to, up to your office and also Kaylin go to your office good make more medicine I think that Jennifer should have plenty of vials now right yeah seven not that many actually all right so we're continuing so the next people that um, these guys need to see Komei and Jan so they can have one each <laughs> And Ricky was actually done, so that's good. Well, let's um, get the Telemans over here. Great, so you can go ahead and sit in one chair each. Well, actually, why don't you just... Um, why don't you just greet Kami instead, where he sits down? Goopy, <laughs> where are you going and why? <laughs> Seriously, You're trying to hit on Jan? <laughs> Typical Goopy, no restrictions. <laughs> okay, so just uh, talk with Komi for a while. And Kaylin, you need to greet Jan. Okay, so it looks like uh, Komi thinks that they got sick on their party. And <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> so many sims gathered in one place. Seems about right. So. All right, do we have anyone else that Don needs to work on down here? Um, we got Cassandra with a very interesting shirt on. <laughs> I need to fix that. Um, that's so tempting. <laughs> but no, I don't think so. That would be super weird. <laughs> so no, uh, actually, no. Um, okay, so we have Phoenix and Bo here as well. Goopy. Yeah, I guess Goopy. <laughs> that sounds good. So let's make him selectable. And uh, send him up to Don's office as well. And then once he arrives, Don can uh, stop working on his article. Jennifer is done. So I think she's going to head downstairs and use the bathroom. 
Oh ja, yeah. a key. Sorry. All right, and I'm adding Goopy as well to the sheet. All right, so these guys um, have talked um, and uh, they've had their examination. So Jennifer, we need to hand out one vial each to these guys as well. And I can clear off uh, Kome. And yeah, Joe, you need to work a bit. So yeah, let's go with mechanical. Looks like he had started something to do with that, so... Good, and Jan can also be cleared off. Nice, so Kaylin needs to also work a bit. So let's uh, do more mechanical. And these guys are working until uh, 6 p.m. So they're working pretty late. So I can also mark those guys green. We also had actually Malcolm land grab. So I need to go with Joe. <laughs> Standing face to face waving at each other. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, okay. I don't know what happened, but okay. <laughs> okay, sit down, Malcolm. And uh, oh, you haven't greeted each other. Something was interrupted, I guess. Yeah, that's better. So sit down. And let's talk. Great, so are things going here? Looks good. All right. So Jennifer is uh, downstairs and uh, the last person who needs to be seeing a doctor today is Bella Goff. So we're summoning uh, Bella. All right, so um, yeah, Jennifer is going to go upstairs and greet her. Oh, I guess the medicine became spoiled since it was sitting out. That's a shame. I guess um, Johnson can work on some things there. Right, and Jennifer is greeting Bella. And it uh, looks like she's not feeling all that well, but she seems to be present in the moment anyway. So Jennifer asks her to come upstairs to her um, office. This is uh, <laughs> not uh, the same kind of um, examination room, but uh, it will make do. Right, looks like uh, Joe is finished also with Malcolm. So work at home. Let's do some logic. And uh, yeah, let's make him unselectable. And oh no, actually we have to have him selectable and then give him a vial. No, <laughs> don't take the whole tree. <laughs> there we go. And then he can stand up and um, can clear him off. Right, and I need to give a key to her as well. Looks like a goopy is done as well. So I'm actually going to clear him off. And uh, yeah, Don, you can... Uh, how long are you working? Also until six, okay. So let's um, do another article. Goopy needs to be cleared off. All right, and uh, Bella is entering the office.
So Jennifer is feeling pretty distressed about this whole situation and she's very confused, very upset about what happened and uh, she resolves to reach out to Mary Sue first thing that she does once she's off work because uh, this is definitely something that she needs to discuss with her and uh, whatever Don has uh, said that um, she agreed with Cassandra she will have to discuss that and uh, dig into that because <laughs> yeah Bella obviously needs help <laughs> Right. Um, yeah. So Don is just going to go ahead and uh, keep working on this article. And um, Jennifer is going to sort of sit and uh, work a bit, but I don't think that she's going to get very much done. So let's just do that. And um, yeah, looks like um, Rand is done with the medicine. And Kaylin. Yeah, you are also done. So, work on some cleaning, I think. And Joe is already working. That's good. Joe is actually done. <laughs> so, yeah. I think that Joe is going to spend the rest of the um, shift down at the reception desk because there needs to be someone down here as well. So, let's just have him work on the mechanical down here. Nice, and she needs to use the bathroom. They're actually um, off work now, actually. So I'm going to make both of them unselectable instead and uh, send them home. Yeah, all of these guys are working on T6, so that's fine. I think I'm just going to uh, fix Cassandra's outfit because that shirt is bothering me. <laughs> yeah, looks like I um, lost her <laughs> shirt somewhere along the line. Uh, so I just gave her a black turtleneck for now. I can fix it later. All right. Good. And she's working. All right, nice. So um, all of them are actually done for the day. So I'm going to um, yeah clear off everyone and send Jennifer back home. Jennifer is going to drive home very anxious to speak to Mary Sue. Jennifer is arriving, but uh, of course, the first thing that's going to happen is that she's going to be sent back to work. Um, so I'm just going to have her, as soon as she pops out of the car, drive to work. I'm going to take a little bit for the car to regenerate and then drive to work. And then she'll be off for the set hours and uh, she'll be back at 6 p.m. Okay, so I have a, a version of the job stopinator that allows me to actually make chance card decisions without uh, risking her getting a promotion. So I guess I could do this one. <laughs> one of the regular senior citizen tour groups from Old Town is taking a tour through the clinic. But their numbers seem to have dwindled. As Jennifer walks over to the group, almost half of them proclaim to be ill and that they need to lie down. Jennifer examines one of them, and a woman with blue hair, but is unable to find anything wrong. Should she turn them away, the hypochondriacs, or start filing the paperwork to check them all in? I think that Jennifer, being a workaholic, would check in all of them. <laughs> Jennifer spends the next hour checking in each of the senior citizens, and the few hours after that, examining every single one of them. The first dozen or so are all given a clean bill of health, and after four hours, Jennifer is unable to find anything wrong with any of them. The whole procedure has cost the clinic quite a bit of time and money, but the members of the tour group are quite appreciative, and Jennifer receives three charisma skill points, reflecting her new standing in the community, and a body skill point for all her hard work. 
Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I suppose Jennifer definitely had a good day at work today, <laughs> all things considered. All right, so Jennifer is arriving. And I actually also saw that uh, she received some bills. So seeing as she's earned quite a bit of money today, um, she can go ahead and get mail. And she can pay all bills. All right. So she's going to head off to uh, Mary Sue. And um, I wonder if there a way I can simulate that. No, the only thing would be to go on a hike, I think, but she, <laughs> she can't do that. So I guess uh, I'll just send her over here and uh, she's walking over to the Pleasant's house. So this is a little earlier in the day and Angela just came home from work. So she was, of course, ill, so I'm going to bring out the vial of medicine for her. Let's put it somewhere that it's not under a driveway or something like that. And then she can... Um, oh, she can't use it. Oh, I guess maybe she's not uh, sick anymore then. Hmm. Let's just try and have her go here and see if that changes anything. I mean, if she's healthy, uh, then that's good. So... Okay, so let's try. No, okay, she can't use it. So I guess that um, uh, should I keep it or should I sell it? Hmm. No, let's just let's just keep it for now. <laughs> Maybe there's some use for it in future. I guess. Um, okay then. So Angela is um, very angry with her father, but she's feeling good about her mother, and um, yeah. These guys aren't getting along all that well. They've spent the morning sort of avoiding each other, really. Uh, Daniel is out here swimming in the pool right now, and Mary Sue is playing the piano. So, <laughs> yeah, Angela is um, just arriving home. And I guess that um, she wants to try to make things better, but she's not very anxious to do so. So actually, I think the first thing that she is going to do is go out and uh, jog for a bit. Uh, her dog is uh, feeling quite well, so she can bring him with on the jogging round. Okay, nice. So they're leaving. I'm going to send uh, Mary Sue upstairs to... Have a bath. Oh wow, Philip is running fast. <laughs> nice. Okay. So Angela is feeling a bit uh, refreshed from her run. And she's been able to clear her head a little bit. She's not one to take um, critique very well she holds it in mostly but um, yeah she's uh, a bit annoyed at Jennifer for calling her out like that even if she kept on a good face <laughs> during so yeah I don't think that she is going to be very quick about reaching out to Nina <laughs> to make things right um Hopefully she won't attack her again. We'll have to see. <laughs> so I think that Mersu is just going to nap a bit on the couch. Daniel can come inside and grab some espresso, I think. Angela is feeling a bit hungry, so I guess that she can have a protein shake. Yeah. Okay, maybe he needs to <laughs> get dressed in something warmer before he um, actually <laughs> grabs some coffee. So let's uh, change into every day. Right, 
Right, so the espresso. And she can uh, grab the other cup. <laughs> Is it time for Mercy to wake up? So Daniel and Mary Sue are discussing what happened. And um, yeah, Daniel sort of claims that um, things just became too much for him. Um, that they haven't had a romantic life for a very long time. And yeah, things just got out of hand. And Mary Sue argues that, um, well, if it, they, they are so dire, he can meet his girls on the side in secret. <laughs> he doesn't have to do it in the middle of a... Uh, public gathering like that and um, yeah Daniel is definitely feeling remorseful about that part of it <laughs> but uh, yeah they are pretty calm and collected about it because I think that their heated romantic feelings are long gone after these many years and uh, everything that they've gone through and yeah so Daniel is more ashamed, I think, that he couldn't keep up the facade of being the perfect husband. And that uh, in the end, he um, failed co to control himself. I think that he also had had a little bit to drink during the party, of course. They had just had a toast after all, so <laughs> when Bella approached him, he couldn't really resist. And um, yeah, he doesn't have any romantic relationships at all right now. So I think that he is feeling pretty lonely uh, deep within. So that was probably what pushed him over the edge in the end. Right. These guys are just uh, hanging out at the TV. Right, so I think that Angela would probably head upstairs to her room. And uh, let's call one of her friends. So she's actually pretty close with Lilith now, uh, but I think that she wants to become closer again with Randy, definitely, and with yeah, with Tosha. They're not friends at all anymore. I think actually she would call Tosha. And let's just have them chat for a bit in there. I guess we don't have a newspaper, I guess... Uh, <laughs> Nina might have uh, run past and taken it or something. <laughs> so I guess, um, yeah, Mercy can just read something. Right, and Daniel can go out in the hot tub, I think. They still want to keep their distance from each other. <laughs> and be in the same house and live together, but not actually like be that closely together, I suppose. Right, so it has become night, uh, evening, and um, there's going to be a uh, knock on the door. So Jennifer is um, walking into the house on her own and greets Mary Sue. So Jennifer starts uh, to tell Mary Sue about the uh, run-in she had with Bella at the hospital today and uh, everything that she learned about um, her and um, what Don told her about why she hasn't received any care. Because Jennifer is of the opinion that um, Bella definitely needs therapy <laughs> and she needs some help by a psychiatrist. And uh, yeah... Apparently, it was Mary Sue who stopped that from happening in, in at the start. And uh, that was something that she agreed with um, Cassandra to do. And why why did that happen? Why did she do all that? And, um, well, Mary Sue is explaining to her everything that happened when Bella just returned. And, of course, she had been gone with the aliens for a very long time. Uh, no other sim in uh, any of the <laughs> countries have been away that long, even though there have been a lot and a lot of abductions. They're always gone for some months only. 
But Bella had been gone for years, many, many years. And when she returned, she definitely wasn't the same person as she, when she left. When she left, she was a, a renowned scientist and a very logical mind. And uh, she was uh, pretty obsessed with aliens and the extraterrestrial. But when she returned, she was a completely different person. She, For one thing, she was so out of it. But she also appeared to be very much into romance all of a sudden and woohooing and making out with all kinds of people all over the place. And she even had a uh, another child. So there were a lot of people who were very interested in Bella and who wanted to make experiments on her and uh, to learn what was happening. And... Uh, Basically, Cassandra and Mary Sue worked together, combining um, some very <laughs> well-aimed bribes with uh, Mary Sue's influence as the um, political head in the neighborhood to keep other interesting parties at bay. And uh, that also meant, of course, that uh, Bella had to abstain from any medical care. Um, she wouldn't get any help to go through it mentally. But um, that would also keep her out of harm's way. Um, Mary Sue tells um, Jennifer that uh, the government was out to send Bella to the Beakers in Strange Town. And uh, that would have definitely been <laughs> very, very bad, uh, seeing as it was later revealed that they were actually experimenting on their ad adoptive son. And we're both in prison for life for that. And uh, that would have been Bella's fate as well, if the government had gotten their hands on her. So that was what Mary Sue and Cassandra stopped from happening. And that is why she has never received any care like this. And Jennifer is pretty um, shocked by all of this. She was not expecting this when she approached Mary Sue. And uh, she feels a bit out of it, like she doesn't know what to do with this information and what the next step should be, because of course she wants to give care to Bella uh, and provide that for her, but if it also means that she will be um, picked up by the government and uh, sent to some science facility for experiments, then that uh, of course can't happen. So she's a bit stumped and uh, she is pretty um, out of it and um, upset. Of course, she also takes this opportunity because she is so upset and uh, because she is so confused about all of it that she also starts arguing with Mary Sue about Lilith. Seeing as Lilith has approached um, Jennifer and received some help from her, but uh, her parents haven't been there for her at all. They haven't even sent her money or anything to help her take care of their grandchild. And um, Mary Sue is feeling really, really bad about that. She is um, not proud in the least to have had that uh, happen. And she would like to reconnect with Lilith, but uh, she doesn't feel like she can actually do that. So she gets pretty upset with Jennifer for meddling and for talking about things that she can't understand. She hasn't been in this household. She doesn't know what things have been like and why they have had to do things the way that they have. But uh, coming this far behind and all of a sudden taking the higher position, like um, judging Mary Sue and Daniel for what they have done, is not uh, in her rights in Mary Sue's mind. And uh, she's not agreeing with Jennifer that um, they have failed Lilith. She says that, um, of course, they have tried to reach out to her, but she has re rejected them at every turn. And um, at this point, she only speaks to her sister. So if there's anything that Lilith needs, she knows she can contact Angela at any time. So Jennifer is a bit placated by that. She... Um, feels like that is some kind of explanation at least, but definitely isn't enough. Uh, she is not happy with that response. And um, yeah, she has a lot on her mind right now. And 
She has really upset Mary Sue, I think, as well. So she tries to calm the situation down um, and just chats a bit more with Mary Sue about all these things. But Mary Sue is pretty annoyed with her at this point. She she doesn't think that uh, Jennifer had any right to barge in here and start accusing her of all kinds of things. So, uh, yeah, she basically sends Jennifer on her way and uh, tells her that she shouldn't meddle in their affairs and uh, they uh, handle things on their own. And if she wants to be part of the Pleasant family and be part of their affairs, she needs to... Stop involving herself in things that she can't understand and uh, keep supporting them instead. So um, this wasn't very successful. Jennifer is sent on her way and uh, yeah, walks back home. Mary Sue uh, is pretty annoyed, but uh, yeah, she um, finally goes to seek out da Daniel after all of this, and uh, just to, to sort of tell him what happened and to ask him to control his sister, because uh, this wasn't really acceptable in Mary Sue's eyes. And Jennifer uh, heads back home. Uh, she feels pretty out of it and um, doesn't really know what she's going to do from this point on. So Jennifer is coming back from the Pleasants, and she's feeling a bit <laughs> upset. She um, is going in to get refreshed. Oh, that's right. Lilith uh, wrecked that toilet, so <laughs> let's use this one instead. So let's just grab a warm shower. Uh, looks like I need to scoot these paintings up a little bit. There we go. Uh, if you didn't know, that happens because the mesh is below ground level, so it takes the um, the light of the um, floor below. So that's why it becomes dark like that. And uh, if you have a lighting mode, it might actually become um, enhanced, like it looks like more than it would in uh, the Maxis game. But it's actually something that's um, yeah, like how the game is designed, <laughs> basically. So there's a, a fix for that for uh, most of the Maxis paintings, or all of the Maxis paintings, I think. It's called the uh, Sweet Down Low that you can get. And that means that the paintings will be sitting at the ground floor when you put them out from the inventory, like from the buy mode. But then you can just elevate them um, after that. Right, so it's not that late. I don't think Jennifer would be that tired and she would probably be a bit more hungry because she has only had lunch. She hasn't had dinner or anything. So let's <laughs> exchange those a little bit. Other than that, uh, I think that Jennifer is feeling a bit out of it, uh, feeling like she took one step forward and two steps back today. Um, so the emptiness of this house is really weighing down on her. I think she feels really, really lonely and like she doesn't really want to be here on her own. So I think that she's going to head out and uh, pay a surprise visit to her daughter. So let's just take a spin and have her drive off to go see Lucy. She hasn't uh, called her before or anything, <laughs> but uh, I think that uh, Jennifer just relies on uh, Lucy being available for her. Um, so we'll have to see. So, the Bertinos have spent their day, um, well, Orlando at work, and uh, Lucy has uh, been home today with the kid, and uh, yeah, it's time for little Phoebe to age up. So, when she meets her grandma in the evening, it's going to be as a toddler. So, let's see what she actually ends up looking like. Awesome. So... This is the little girl. She's really cute. <laughs> I actually kind of like that hair on her. I think she can keep that hair. Uh, but I would like to buy some other clothing for her, I think. So let's turn on all the lights and 
have uh, Lucy buy some clothes for her. Yeah, let's buy both every day and um, PJs as well. You never know what the toddlers end up with. <laughs> Might be that bear outfit, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah. Uh, so little Phoebe is going to need some um, toddler furniture. I'm actually going to put this in... Um, yeah, let's make it Orlando's inventory because they might want more children in the future and they can keep that for that. All right, and we're also putting this chair in his inventory so that they can have a uh, high chair at the table. And then she has some toys here, a potty chair, and then her little bed and a dollhouse. I thought it was cute. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's snuggle her for a bit. And uh, yeah, she's feeling pretty well, but um, let's give her something to eat, I think. Oh, is the dollhouse in the way? Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I put it like on him or something. Yeah, let's just do it this, this way then. Fine. I guess she wanted to use it. Maybe that was why <laughs> something happened. Okay. Great. So I can actually go ahead and... Um, let's use the um, sim manipulator, I think, is the best for this. And plan clothes casual for Phoebe. Oh, I think she... Okay, she has to be <laughs> unoccupied while we do it. So let's start with that. Lucy can go ahead and uh, watch TV for now. Yeah, that's cute. And okay, I'm gonna have to <laughs> remove this dollhouse because she is obsessed with this. Uh, <laughs> let's move this one in here instead then, that's cute. And um, I guess maybe some decoration in the corner. Yeah, something like that, I guess. It's good. Right, and also... There we go. That's nice. We can get rid of this, and uh, Orlando, you can finally put her in the chair. Oh yeah, I don't know what happened. But uh, all of a sudden they have three balls of chemistry. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm happy about that. I don't know what happened, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Nice when something random uh, good happens sometimes as well. <laughs> yeah, but these guys, they have been together since they were teenagers, so I definitely ship them. <laughs> I'm so happy that they, um, that they like each other that much. Nice. Yeah, so... Um, oh! <laughs> we have an intruder! <laughs> Hi, Oliver! We're here to see your brother. <laughs> All right. Um, well... I guess uh, Orlando's going to sit and chat with him then. And... Yeah. Let's start with uh, teaching her to walk. She actually wanted that, so... Let's start with that. All right, so there will be a knock on the door. And uh, Orlando is going to go outside and uh, see who it is. And uh, yeah, they've met before, but they're not very familiar with each other. So I think that <laughs> Orlando is going to be pretty surprised to see her here. But yeah, they greet each other warmly. And um, yeah, he tells her to please come inside. So he's going to have some coffee and uh, Jennifer is going to go in here. And uh, yeah, Lucy 
learns that her mother is here. So I suppose that she's going to show off her grandchild. Yeah, they're starting by talking to each other. Jennifer is going to uh, greet little Phoebe. She looks really happy to get to meet her. <laughs> nice. All right, then. So let's uh, put her down. And um, yeah, it looks like Lucy went to the bathroom. But uh, yeah, she's going to chat a bit with her mother and see what she's uh, she's up to, how things are with her. Yeah, Jennifer tells her that it's been a, a long day at work and uh, she hopes that she's not intruding, but she was feeling a bit uh, lonely in that empty house. And <laughs> Lucy, of course, uh, greets her warmly and says, of course, she's welcome. Um, so... Um, Orlando's going to say goodbye to his brother. He used the bathroom. And uh, Lucy is going to ask Jennifer if she can get her anything. And uh, Jennifer asks if there is by chance any dinner. And uh, Lucy says that, of course, they've already eaten, but there's uh, something that she can heat up for her in the fridge. So I'm going to get uh, some leftovers out for Jennifer. And Jennifer is going to be very grateful for that. So she's going to grab a bowl of soup. And then she can put that away. And uh, yeah, Jennifer can go ahead and eat that. And Lucy's going to sit down at the table with her mother. And they're going to catch up. It uh, has been a while since uh, both of them just sat down to calmly have dinner. Um, they have met each other here and there in the neighborhood and uh, always greet each other friendly, but they haven't reconnected as much as they regularly meet up like this. So this is a good, nice start over for them, I think, um, seeing as Jennifer disappeared basically as soon as uh, Lucy was in her child years still uh, before she had even become a teenager. And um, yeah. She wasn't a present person in her life, and now she wants to be. She wants to be here for Lucy, and she wants to reconnect and make things right. And I think that Lucy appreciates that. So Jennifer also reaches the topic of uh, worrying about Lilith, seeing as she's um, really down on her luck, luck right now, and she um, doesn't really have any where to live, that's a place of her own, and what with her young child as well. And she wonders if Lucy has been seeing her, uh, seeing as their neighbors. And uh, yeah, Lucy says that she sees her from time to time, but that they haven't hung out or anything like that. But uh, that now that they both have so young children, that she is sure that they will see more of each other. And um, of course, Lucy agrees with Jennifer that it is a little bit worrying um, with Lilith and uh, she would definitely like to connect more with her if she can so she tells her mother that she's going to keep an eye on Lilith seeing as the neighbors and uh, yeah, reach out to her and uh, see what she can uh, do to connect more with her and uh, make sure that she has everything she needs yeah and I think that Jennifer is feeling pretty proud <laughs> uh, that uh, yeah Lucy is such a responsible person really so someone is calling Lucy, so she's going to answer that. Okay, so it's her younger brother, Will, actually calling. That's pretty cute. Uh, they're not really that close, so I think I'm going to drop that down so they can chat for a bit. Orlando is uh, pretty tired, <laughs> so he actually is a bit hungry as well. Um, but I think that he's going to... yeah. Talk a bit to Jennifer as well and uh, thank her for coming. But that uh, it's a little bit late now and uh, they probably need to get ready for the next day as well. A 
So he sort of says that uh, it was nice seeing you, Jennifer, but um, I think it's time that we all headed to bed now. So take care and uh, we'll see you next time. And um, Lucy's going to hang up as well. And she's going to actually um, say goodbye to her mother. And also say that it was so nice for her to stop by. I think uh, Orlando needs to grab some snack. Uh, he's pretty hungry. Yeah, and Jennifer is heading off. Lucy is going to head to bed. But as Jennifer leaves, she sort of looks over to this side of the lane and uh, sort of stops and thinks for a little bit and uh, decides to head that way as well. It is pretty late, but she has a feeling that uh, Lilith will be awake anyway. So, the Hamiltons. Johnson has uh, spent the day, of course, at the hospital, as we saw. Ophelia and Lilith have been home with the children all day. And we now have a walk-by here, Ricky, who has come to see his child. And the question is, what will happen if Lilith is going to actually allow him to do that? He has been knocking on the door for a while now, but no one is answering it. And he's wandered over to the window and can see that Ophelia is sitting there and is basically ignoring him. So that tells him that uh, they know that it's him and they are actively choosing not to open up the door. And Johnson also sees him as uh, he comes home. So uh, he is going to go up to Ricky and uh, argue with him. Why is he here? He knows that uh, he's not welcome in this house. And why won't he leave Lilith alone? So Johnson is definitely taking the stance of the protective man in the house. And Ricky is uh, really unhappy about this situation. Because even though he didn't want to marry... Lilith, he still wants to be in his daughter's life and uh, he still wants to be a father for her. He doesn't want to be cut out entirely of her life like this and he really doesn't agree with the choices that has been made for him. He hasn't really had a choice what to do about this fathership <laughs> that he has. Um, he is Hope's parent and he does want to be in her life. And Johnson is uh, just... Trying to rebuff him, trying to make him leave, saying that, he, sorry, dude, but you can't <laughs> come into this house. And Ricky is um, wandering away, feeling really, really unhappy about it. And um, yeah, no doubt he'll be back. <laughs> he has not given up. Uh, he definitely wants to see his daughter by any means possible. So Ricky is, uh, yeah, going away. And yeah, Johnson is going to go into the house now that the, the um, yeah, not danger, but uh, yeah, he has been dissuaded. <laughs> yeah, so the first thing that he's going to see when he comes into the bathroom is that this sink is broken and no one has fixed it. So <laughs> he'll have to do that before he freshens up. Lilith is apparently out here spying on John, <laughs> seeing something shocking apparently. Yeah, enough of that. I think that uh, you can clean up a little bit after, well, the lunch. They actually had um, Adriana over as well earlier. And uh, yeah, they both became friends with her. And um, I... Caved in and decided to actually make her buy after all. Because uh, seeing as she's a romance sim as well, I think that that will be a little bit more interesting. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Lilith uh, has two bolts with her, but uh, yeah, that's not uh, all that impressive. She's actually the most attracted to <laughs> Oliver Bertino for some reason. But yeah, she's pretty high up there. All right, so yeah, this guy is really tired. And it looks like uh, Hope is going to age up now. Yeah. There she is with the dirty diaper. 
Okay, so this will be interesting to see what she ends up looking like. So, yeah, of course, she has black hair. And it looks like she has her father's nose. Yeah, she actually, I think, looks quite a lot like Ricky. And she's really cute. <laughs> nice. Okay, yeah, but I think I want to change her hair, actually. So let's... Um, hmm. Do they not have a mirror? Oh, I could just uh, grab the, the manipulator, I think. And, uh, yeah. Oh, you can do so many things with this, but it looks like you can't uh, change appearance with it. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I think maybe we can do it with the Sim Blender. Yeah. So let's uh, put her on the floor. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> let's have that. Great. And uh, I also want to change her clothes. So I think that uh, Lilith should pay for that, though. So let's see. Shop online, buy clothing every day. And PJs. And we'll also have to... Question is, do I want to keep this? I definitely want to keep, oh, keep this for Ophelia. Because it was actually hers that uh, Lilith borrowed. <laughs> But I think I can sell this cot. Um, but of course, we have to keep the little um, toy from uh, yeah that Dirk gave to Lilith originally. <laughs> so let's sell this one. Yeah, I think that's good. <laughs> Seems like Lilith to have <laughs> that kind of spread uh, bed sheet on it. But yeah, of course. Um, Her diaper needs to be changed as well. Mm. Wait, who is actually doing what? Okay. Right, so he's exhausted. Um, he needs to just go to bed for now. And uh, yeah, Ophelia, you can help with um, taking care of Hope. Since you have this changing table, let's just do it like that for now. Um, before you put it away. Um, okay, good. So Hope has some uh, clothes as well. So Lilith can go ahead and keep cleaning this and then, yeah, get some leftovers, I think. Yeah, and you need to plan every day for Hope. Yeah, this one. <laughs> And dress Hope in PJs, because otherwise the change isn't uh, going through. And then Hope. This one. And then you can dress uh, Hope in every day again. Nice! Uh, yeah, and you can, uh, sure, you can eat that, whatever that is. <laughs> So let's put the um, changing table in her inventory again. And how are you feeling? You're feeling pretty well. So let's just put her down so she can play a bit with the toys. Yeah, and Ophelia also needs to eat something. And Johnson as well. How's it going in here? He gave up. <laughs> okay. I'll just send him off to bed like that then. Okay, yeah. Something else then? And okay, finally. <laughs> right, so I think that Lilith and Ophelia are discussing uh, Ricky since he came past today and um, the fact that he wouldn't leave and sort of what they are going to do moving forward. 
Uh, Lilith still doesn't want him to interfere with Hope. She doesn't want him in her life. And um, I think that uh, Johnson thinks that uh, pretty harsh, really. Um, he hasn't known Lilith as long as Ophelia has. Ophelia, of course, understands why Lilith decides to do that, but she... I don't think that Ophelia really in her heart agrees with that decision. So I think that um, Ophelia is meddling a little bit, <laughs> trying to push Lilith a little bit in the other direction. But uh, yeah, for now, she's very decided. And um, yeah, she can't really have Rick interfering with Hope's life because uh, she's trying to reconnect with Angela and of course Angela can never find out who Hope's father really is so Ricky really has to stay away uh, and he can't uh, be a part of their life because eventually then Angela will find out so even if Lilith, Lilith isn't as angry with him anymore she's actually um, sort of settled things in her mind I think about um, him not wanting to marry her and um, yeah, she. I think she understands his side since she understood where he came from in concerns to Angela. But um, still, um, it just is the situation and it's uh, how it has to be. Even if uh, she also can sense, I think, that her friends isn't completely with her. Um, it's what she has to do to to keep her daughter safe and to keep herself in Angela's good graces. wasn't very feeling for him so I think he's going to get something more um, yeah Lilith is going to hang out a bit with her daughter all right so Hope has some wants for learning stuff so I usually start with the um, walking so let's start with that here as well <laughs> I think that he has recovered pretty much now, but uh, I need to error him out of the bed since it's so late. And let's see if um, we have time to bring him to the potty. Or will we just make it or will we just not make it? <laughs> ah, we just made it, cool. <laughs> Sometimes you're lucky, I guess. Um, right, so Johnson, you can go ahead and clean yourself up. Yeah, so Ophelia is feeling pretty tired, so I think that she's going to have a, an early night, so she is heading off to bed. Johnson is also pretty tired, but I think he's going to stay up for a bit. Oh, apparently Hope is exhausted now, so yeah, let's send her to bed. And Lilith can, uh, yeah, grab a snack. Looks like she's... Um, Hungry. Yeah, so these two still haven't gotten to know each other all that well, but uh, yeah. They're being friendly anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I think that Johnson still has a pretty hard time to wrap his head around Lilith. It looks like uh, they're discussing subjects that she likes, so... <laughs> That's a good strategy, I think. All right, I think Johnson would like to head out here and uh, stargaze a bit. All right, and um, yeah, it's nearing the time that <laughs> Jennifer left uh, the Bertinos. So there will be a um, knock on the door. And Lilith goes out to see who it is, and uh, yeah. 
greets Jennifer with a uh, hug. Because of course they've grown fairly close, especially now after uh, the pregnancy. And apparently Jennifer just waltzed into the house. <laughs> Uh, I guess she didn't get to read the newspaper this morning, so <laughs> just a little bit. She only had time to glance at it, so <laughs> I guess the temptation became too too much. Uh, yeah, so yeah, Jennifer has come to to see Lilith, ask how she is, and I don't think that Lilith is very faced by the lateness of the hour. I think that she's pretty happy to see Jennifer and. Um, a bit embarrassed as well, because um, Jennifer is a very refined person, very successful, and uh, I mean, her house is pretty nice when you, you're in it, and Lilith very recently saw it as well, so I think that Lilith is pretty embarrassed to be squatting in someone else's house like this. Um, but yeah, she's going to lead uh, Jennifer into a room with Hope. While all of that is going on, Angela is finally, finally having some luck in her romantic life. After everything happened with uh, Jennifer earlier and uh, she ran off, Angela prepared some dinner for her parents. And uh, after they had cooled off after their <laughs> arguments about Jennifer, they all sat down to have some dinner together. And uh, after that... Angela invited over Zachary, and they are actually getting along really, really well. So he greeted her with a uh, squeeze, <laughs> and uh, after that point, they actually get along really well. So it seems like uh, the Ask to Just Be Friends uh, mod helped things along really, really nicely, because they actually even can kiss each other now without issues. So yeah, I think that this uh, might actually be a good start to their relationship and Angela might actually finally have someone in her life that she can rely on and um, yeah talk to about these uh, difficult things and actually spend time with <laughs> she has been so unlucky for a very long time but now it seems like she's actually going to yeah have a romance at last and Zachary just got a crush on her so that's nice so let's see if we can also make that happen for Angela. It's getting pretty late, so I think that... Um, I guess I can't ask him to stay over. But let's um, see what happens if we move this to the bed. Actually, has Angela ever woohooed before with anyone? Did she woohoo with Ricky? 
Yeah, she did. Okay. <laughs> so she has hoo-hooed before. But I don't think that Zachary has, so this is going to be a um, new experience for him. Oh, it looks like I have some OMSP in the way here. Let's just... Um, for one thing, it's very bright, so let's, I think, remove that. Yeah, <laughs> that was very bright. Um, yeah, so there's some kind of OMSP here. Uh, I guess it might be that one. Let's try that and see if that helps. Okay, there's something else here. Let's just remove all of that. Okay, there's something here that's empty. <laughs> that explains it. Okay, good, now it works. It looks like maybe Angela needs to be the um, initiator in these kinds of things, because uh, things didn't really work out well when uh, Chandler was trying to woo her, and not when Zachary was trying either. But now that she's uh, very active in it, it looks like things are going really well. I guess it makes sense, because Angela needs to be in control all the time. <laughs> So far, no crush from Angela's side, so let's just uh, have them woohoo. And uh, possibly fall asleep together, but I don't think that... Oh my god, <laughs> Zachary fell in love with her. <laughs> wow, yeah. Well, that's nice. But of course, Angela is a bit more difficult to impress, so we'll have to see. So it's late. And Jennifer is finally arriving home. And she actually has a want to befriend Bella. And I think that that is uh, definitely the direction that she wants to head in now. Um, she wants to know more about her and see what she can do to help her in any way possible. And still keep her safe. So I'm going to actually unlock this uh, more for fun's sake <laughs> want and lock in that one. So I think that uh, Jennifer definitely wants to persuade that path and see what she can do. And I think she's been pretty strengthened by the conversations with her family this evening. Even if it was a bit strained with Mary Sue, of course, um, things look really well with Lucy and she actually is pretty hopeful for Lilith as well, even though she's in a very difficult position. It seems like she has confidence in herself and she's doing everything that she can. So, yeah. Um, Jennifer's door is, of course, still open for her if she does change her mind. But, uh, yeah. So, it looks like um, Jennifer needs a midnight snack before she heads to bed. And that's quite enough for her, I think, for being alone at home, she just grabs something to eat and then goes to bed. I think that that is uh, as much as Jennifer can stand being alone in this house. She has considered, of course, getting a pet. But um, in the end, I think that Jennifer both likes to have a very clean house. And uh, she doesn't uh, enjoy the thought of ha having pet hair everywhere. <laughs> And uh, also she's away at work so many hours and she's sort of married to her job that um, the, the, any pet she would get would just sit alone in the house. So I think that she has decided against it for several reasons. The best thing would be if she could find a um, partner of some kind, but so far it doesn't look very, <laughs> very bright in that regard. Um, she was involved a little bit with Grayson at some point, but um, yeah. We'll have to see. Maybe she meets someone. <laughs> All right. So yeah, Jennifer is going to go to bed and contemplate what's happened um, today. And that was uh, episode one in season two. I hope that you enjoyed this new format. And uh, I hope you're excited for the next episode. See you next time and take care. Bye.